Hi, this is Bart Fisher with the Agricultural and Food Policy Center at Texas A&M University. Uh, the purpose of this video is to provide a brief overview of USDA's Quality Loss Adjustment Program and also to provide a brief introduction to a tool that we recently developed. Uh, USDA asked uh, for help uh, in putting together a tool that would help uh, cotton producers fill out uh, the QLA application and so we have developed that tool and this video will serve as a quick introduction for how to use that tool. Uh, with respect to the Quality of loss, uh, loss Adjustment Program, USDA uh, has a lot of uh, really good information available at uh, farmers.gov. So the direct address is farmers.gov forward slash quality hyphen loss. Uh, they highlight the application period, so with the deadline coming up quickly on March 5th, 2021, a lot of other additional information about eligibility. Uh, we're going to scroll down to this section called Submit Application to USDA Service Center. That's where we can find the relevant form, so the FSA 898. The part we were asked to help producers with is really Part D, uh, and this is for crops uh, other than forage with total dollar value loss, so where a producer actually has a total uh, dollar value loss for that for that crop. Uh, we've been asked to focus uh, specifically on cotton in part because cotton is somewhat unique where the quality, uh, quality adjustments are all relative to the loan rate, uh, 52 cent loan rate, and so uh, the tool that we've developed does uh, address cotton specifically. And once you've put your information in, uh, it will provide all of the data you need for items number 22 through 34 uh, of Part D of Form FSA 898. So if you navigate over to our website, uh, afpc.tamu.edu, uh, which I suspect you already have if you've, uh, if you've <laughs> watched this video, uh, this video will be available on our website uh, here, but you can click on this link, Quality Loss Adjustment QLA Calculator for Cotton, uh, to download. Uh, you may be asked uh, you know, to allow downloads, but once you do, uh, you can just pull up, you can pull up that file. It's an Excel file. Uh, once you've opened it up, <clears throat> it should default to a README page. Uh, the only input value on this screen is the eligible producer name, and that is the name of an eligible person or legal entity. Uh, it also includes, uh, the README page also includes our, our disclaimer, which it is important for you to review, uh, some information about the program and about the tool, and then it also has our contact information at the bottom. If you do have any questions about the tool, you can reach out uh, to us at 979-845-5913. Uh, if you have questions about QLA itself, the program itself, you can uh, consult your local FSA office or farmers.gov, which as I mentioned earlier, does have a lot of very uh, good information. So for our example today, uh, we're gonna type in Aggie Farmer LLC is the name of our entity that we're going to enter. Uh, and then you can just click over on the next tab, Cotton 2018, the first yellow tab, uh, where you can input your information for 2018. There is a lot of uh, detail at the top. I would encourage you, it's important that you read through through that. Um, I'll cover it here briefly. You know, the calculator is set up to accommodate 20,000 bales of cotton and up to 10 uh, line entries on Form 898. Uh, if you need a bigger version, you can reach out to us. Uh, we also highlight that a lot of the data that you're going to need uh, to complete the application is available for download uh, from your gen or from your uh, marketing cooperative. So I'd encourage you to reach out to, to them to see if they actually have this data electronically so that you don't have to enter it all by hand. Uh, but you start in the gray area. So step one is starting with this gray area. And it's primarily if you have downloaded data, uh, you can copy and paste it as appropriate in the individual in, in the individual columns. Uh, if you're working you know, with uh, PCCA as an example, I know their data is set up uh, already in this format. And so you can copy and paste it as a block directly in, into uh, the calculator. As we've noted here, if your data, if, and if you don't have downloaded data, but you have bail records, if you don't have the actual loan rate uh, for those bales and you only have premiums and discounts, you can come over here in column W and enter those in. But uh, really only do that if you don't have access to the actual uh, loan value. Uh, you can put in all of your bales, uh, and if bales are, have loan rates above $0.52, cents, the calculator is just going to exclude them 
uh, for you since uh, quality loss is only on bales that uh, with an actual loan value below 52 cents per pound. Uh, also note here that when you insert your producer share, make sure it's at two decimal points. So two thirds would be 66.67. Again, we want to get the decimal places right just so everything calculates exactly as uh, FSA would have it do. Uh, once you've input the gray data, you'll find uh, that the blue cells automatically default uh, to values based on what you put in uh, the gray area. We did that mainly uh, so that you didn't have to start from scratch on inputting information in blue, but uh, the expectation is that you will go through and verify that all of those co are correct, and if not, that you'll change them uh, as appropriate. And so the first one will be column A, a uh, affected by a qualifying disaster event for each bale. Uh, you're going to have to assert yes or no, and it, it defaults to yes, but if that bill was not affected, the quality wasn't affected by the disaster event, you have to put no, and it will it will take that bail out of the analysis. Uh, on the disaster event, you'll also find that it defaults to drought. Uh, if you are in a D3 drought county and, and are eligible based on drought, it's going to default to the entire year, and you can leave it you can leave it that way. But if you put in another disaster event, you're going to need to put in the finite date that apply dates that applied to the disaster event. Organic and conventional, it will default to conventional, as you will see. I uh, need to change it to organic if it is indeed organic. Uh, the final input then is going to be on this base loan rate or contract price. Uh, all the cotton is going to be based off of uh, the base uh, loan value, and you're going to compare that to the actual loan value to determine premiums and discounts. The model is going to do that for you. Uh, this column and column in is really for if you had contracted cotton. And so if you had if you had cotton that you marketed on the open market or that you marketed through a pool marketing pool, this is going to uh, be default to 52 cents, and you just leave it at 52 cents. But if you had a contracted price. Uh, put the contracted price in here instead. So uh, as I mentioned, a lot of data can be downloaded. I've downloaded an example. Uh, in this case was from PCCA. Uh, we're going to ignore the header up at the top and just select the data. I'm going to scroll down to the very bottom. If you know the keystroke shortcuts for copying and pasting, you know, feel free to use those uh, certainly for copying. If not, once you've selected the data, you go to edit and, and copy. Uh, go back to the calculator. We're going to put the cursor in F21. I'm going to go to Edit, Paste Special, Values, and OK. And that's all right up here. Uh, the, the pathway to follow for doing that is, is up here in the gray area. But once I do that, I've pasted it in. Uh, and as I mentioned, these items automatically default uh, to certain values. Again, it is imperative that you go in uh, and certify that. If you weren't affected by drought, if drought was not the result, uh, was not the cause of the quality loss, you need to go change it to another another factor um, that, uh, that was eligible or another disaster event that was eligible. So for example, if this particular bale uh, was affected by a tornado instead of drought, or a named hurricane, you know, I could put in hurricane. I would need to change the dates uh, to the particular, the dates uh, of the hurricane where the damage occurred. Uh, and then the model is going to distinguish them between those disaster events. Uh, beyond that, I'll do the exact same thing for 2019. Again, following the exact same steps as the, the previous worksheet. Once I'm finished, I can go to the print tab. Uh, it's going to pull over the entity name. It's going to give you separate results for 18 and 19. Again, in our example, we didn't uh, didn't put in 2019, so it's left blank. Uh, but for 2018, we had put in all the information for Robertson County, cotton, crop type, and intended use are going to default to leave blank. You can just leave those blank when in the form. Uh, in our example, we were using conventional, growing conventional cotton, but on the disaster event, we changed one of those to be hurricane, and so it's pulling that out. Uh, separately. All the rest of the drought is being uh, calculated together. It's pulling together all of the total affected production, uh, the total dollar value loss, and then the, the price before before discount, which is a calculated by the model as well as a weighted, a weighted average. You'll note this error that pops up out here to the side. It says you can exclude this entry since there's no eligible production. That won't print uh, on the printout, but just to let you know, you don't need to put that in there in the application since it's since it's zero. Uh, the reason for that, if we go back to the 18 page, 
the actual loan value on that bale of cotton, even though it was affected by the hurricane, that bale was at, at uh, just under 55 cents, which is above the loan rate. And so it ended up not being included in the effect, affected production because there wasn't uh, a quality uh, loss below 52 cents. And so when you get to the print tab, that's why it's entered as zero. And you can you can just choose to leave that out when you fill out the form 8, 898. Uh, as we note at the top, uh, the FSA office is going to use this information. You're going to use it to fill out the form, and then they're going to use it to determine if you've met the 5% loss threshold, and then they're going to use it in their software to calculate any payments. And so the real purpose of this calculator is to help you pull together all of your bail records uh, into a format that's useful for filling out Part D of uh, FSA Form 898. Once you've done that, you can simply go to File, Print, uh, on, on my machine, I'm going to go to preview just to, to see what, what that uh, looks like. And, and here's what the form looks like formatted uh, to print out with the version numbers at the bottom. And again, with the disclaimer uh, that accompanies it as well. Uh, the, other, uh, the other tabs are formatted for printing as well. If you choose to, to print those, um, they're, they're formatted for printing as well. And so if you do have any questions, our number is uh, all over this decision tool, particularly if you have questions about the tool or, or working with it, feel free uh, to give us a call. If you have questions about QLA in general, uh, please consult farmers.gov or your local FSA office. Thanks.